Hi guys, thank you for joining me today. I really love all your support and everything. Um, today's sermon is called His Bleeding Love. Um, this sermon came to me when I was at the post office yesterday. Um, I was thinking of that song, um, by the O'Neill Lewis of uh, Bleeding Love. Um, it's, it's about a girl that is supposed to get over a guy, but she said she keeps bleeding love for him and all that. And I, and I have a weird mind when it comes to music. Um, usually when I hear a song, I, uh, a secular song, I think about how, how this song can relate to kingdom or does it relate to kingdom. Sometimes it doesn't, uh, but sometimes I find it doesn't. Um, I, I was just thinking about Jesus on the cross and how when he bled for us it was because of his tremendous love for us um, that he that he bled and died and we often think of him bleeding as painful and whatever it was extremely painful if you read the gospel account or see the passion of the Christ um, in the movie by Mount Gibson about 10, 10 or so years ago, you'll see the bloody body of Jesus Christ. But, um, and it said it came, um, when they pierced his side, uh, he bled drops of blood and water. And even before that, um, he bled, um, he bled in the garden. He prayed so hard. Um, the stress was so much that he began to bleed. And I was thinking of uh, that Leona Lewis song, and I was thinking perhaps maybe um, he bled um, not only blood, but he, but he bled his love for us. He, he took on the pain that we that we should have had um, and just took it on and his blood um, was was because of his love for us it was it was because of the tremendous love of God that he had for us that he bled. And I think that we as a society, as Christians or as Muslims and as Jews, don't really understand how much God loves us and how much Jesus in in the Christian to, um, in the Christian way of thought really loves us and we 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 often think of love as a very pleasant thing but I think love is the strongest emotion and I think when when I say Christ bled love I mean that he knew that most of the world wouldn't accept him. But he still went to the cross and what came out along with, with the drops of blood and water was his love for us. That's why he, that's why he took on our sin and our, our shame. Because he knew that our, he knew that the ransom for our sin was his death and he took it on 
because um, in the garden, his um, before the fall, his original intention was for us to live in peace with him and with each other. But because the serpent was so cunning and because the serpent deceived Eve, um, things started to happen as soon as Adam took the fruit. And, and all throughout the Bible, uh, the, the Lord um, all oh, sorry, I should say, all throughout the Old Testament, the Lord tried to um, get get us back to His original intention, that peaceful garden um, mentality that we were supposed to have, um, that mentality that we can commune with Him. And him alone but it didn't work so his final plan was to where Adam failed that's why Jesus had to come so Jesus died because God knew that he couldn't go back on his word he said um, he said, oh, when you eat of this tree, he said, you, sh you shall surely die. And God's a God who never goes back on his word. He, it doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what, um, what we do or what he does. He will never go back on his word. And because... Um, because he said that, because that was the command of eating the fruit from the tree, he couldn't say, oh, well, then let's forget about it, because he's not a God to ever go back on his word. So he had to send someone who was without sin, um, who, who was without blemish, because he knew... Um, God knew we had screwed up so badly um, that there was no recourse other than to um, other than to send someone that was without sin, without blemish, to to die in our place, and so that where Jesus came along and I think when he was bleeding and all the drops of blood were coming down and the water was leaking out of his side and, along with the blood I think along with the pain and the hurt he was he was bleeding out his love for us he did it because he loved us so much he, he, he took on the pain that we should have had and, and took it on himself um, to restore us back to our relationship with God that we should have had. And that's why today we can actually um, have the relationship that we do have because of the um, blood of Jesus Christ. And because, like, that, and what, um, that's why we can have the relationship that we can have with Jesus Christ. That's why we don't need anyone else but ourselves um, because of the, the shed blood of Jesus Christ and I think that a lot of people don't understand 
what we have in the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is the most, if not one of the most, redeeming factors of the Christian life. And I think when you understand how much the blood is just, um, when you understand how much the blood is speaking for you, is working for you, can work on your behalf, your life becomes, if not simpler, your life becomes something that you know that you don't have to handle alone. See, we are restored through Jesus and his blood. Because when you, okay, when, when you bleed blood, that means you bleed the life of God out of yourself. So when, when Jesus bled, he took, he bled his life out of himself so that we can now have his life. And then when we say the blood covers all sin, we mean that the life of God covers everything you've done wrong, everything you've ever done wrong, everything that you will do wrong. And it's just an amazing thing. And I think sometimes we take advantage of the um, blood of Christ and the grace of God because we think it's a get out of jail free card when, when it's not it's not free for us it causes us to um, it causes the it should cause the Christian to be amazed and stand firm actually, actually it does for me like it when I think of a of the, the bloody cross, as we call it. It causes me to be so amazed that, that the God of the universe saw fit to love me, saw fit to send his son to die such a bloody death for me. And I think a lot of uh, churches are afraid of the blood because it's gruesome and it's and it's not friendly and it's not loving but the blood of Jesus is necessary and I think God is grieving today at some churches because they refuse to talk about the blood and the cross but that is where the redemption comes from the redemption doesn't come from good worship music. The redemption doesn't come from a good sermon. The redemption comes from people knowing that there is hope through the birth, through the blood of Christ. And there is peace through the blood of Christ. And we don't have to sacrifice bull bullocks anymore. We don't have to sacrifice goats anymore. We don't need to deal with those festivals anymore. But although we respect the history of those festivals and the history teaches us, but the blood of Jesus sustains, the blood of Jesus heals. It's actually what the blood of Jesus is, I believe, is the life of God. And when you understand the very life of God, it just is so mind-boggling. There isn't words that God would bleed out his life and his love for us. It is really something amazing. And I, and I, the Lord just wants us to understand a true relationship with him and his true sacrifice. He sacrificed everything he, he was. He gave up his life for us. And it, he ro it rose again. 
he rose again from the dead to, ju to just to save us from whatever we did wrong, whatever we will do wrong. He, he rose to just do what we couldn't do. And it's amazing. When I think of the cross, when I think of his bleeding love, it's just, it just floors me. I'm like, why would a God, um, the God who created, who created uh, countless universes, who created the sun, the moon, the stars, send his only son to die such a bleeding death to really, for me, this girl in 2019 that lives in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. It's just awesome. It's just amazing. And I think when you when you personalize the bleeding love of Jesus, I think when you understand that when he died, he died so that we could live, but he bled his love for us. It was with his blood, his love came out with every groan and every and every stab of pain and every um every every stab of the crown, every everything he went through on the cross. It was his, his way of saying, I love you, my daughter. I love you, my son. And, and it is just so amazing. And I pray today that you receive the love of Jesus Christ and you receive this, this gift that is free, but it will cost you everything. You see, I think we've, We've, um, we've received the promises of God, but we haven't see, received um, the suffering of Jesus. And I think when you, when I think of cross, the cross, I think of um, what he died to give us. He died so that we could have life. But I also think of um, the other side of the cross, which is, we don't really like to talk about it. We like to talk about Sunday, but we don't like to talk about Friday, which is the suffering. And I think when it comes, you cannot have the crown without the cross. Um, because when you suffer for him, when you go through trial and suffering, it, it perfects not only your faith, but it perfects your heart towards him. It, it makes your love stronger. When you've gone through something that only God and you can go through, it makes your love stronger. It makes your love better. It makes, it makes a difference. You come out stronger. You come out. St you come out wiser. You come out better. And I think, I think as human beings, we love to get away from suffering. But I think suffering is necessary because I, th I know that suffering perfects the saints. The suffering makes you stronger. It makes you, what I mean by um, perfects the saints and making you stronger, it makes you tough. There's nothing like a, a little a trial to make you know who you are. That's the thing about suffering. Before you suffered, um, you don't know who you are. Suffering brings the real you to the surface. Suffering brings who you really are, who God intended for you to be 
to the surface. And I think if you if you can suffer a while, the rejoicing is is so much better. And I think when when you can understand how to embrace your suffering and let it teach you about things, about yourself, about who you are, about who you are, I think your life becomes a lot richer instead of trying to run from suffering. And sometimes, um, even when your suffering doesn't end the way you want it, even sometimes when it ends in death of a loved one, death of a family member, death of a dream, death of a job, it still perfected you because th th whatever you lost, you learn from. So even when your suffering does not um, turn out to be um, the glory that you thought, you still take the lessons with you. So take the lessons of suffering with you. Ask the Lord. What, when you're going through something, I dare you to ask the Lord. Instead of complaining, why am I going through this? Why me? Ask the Lord. Lord, what lessons do you want me to take with me from this. Lord, what are you trying to teach me from this? Instead of running from it, learn from it. Take the lessons and they'll help you throughout your life. There are two types of people. People that learn from things or, or people that need to go through and go through and go through and don't learn anything. What kind of person do you want want to be? Do you want to take Do you want to take the lessons what God is trying to teach you, or do you want to run from them? Oh, it's too painful. Yes, honey, I know it's painful, but it's at the end of it. No matter how it turns out. No matter if you've got scars, if you've got pain, if you've got blood on your hands, if you've got a few punches, it's working out for your good. You may limp a little bit, but you're still here, honey. You're still here. And he still loves you. He didn't do, he didn't make you go through it because he hates you or he wants to destroy you. He made you go through it because he needed to see, he needed to see if you knew who you are because a lot of people don't know who they are until they go through suffering. And when you do go through suffering, you understand that suffering, at the end of suffering is a joy that you cannot describe. And sometimes it's the it's not the joy that you would expect, but it's an even greater joy that you than you could ever imagine. Everything in your life comes to teach you something, especially suffer, suffering. So take the lessons. Take the lessons, even if you have scars. Even if you have bruises, even if you have scabs, understand that it's all working together for your good. Understand that this too is for a purpose. Your suffering is not for nothing. It is for a perfect purpose. It is for a a greater life. It is for a greater understanding of yourself. And a lot of people don't understand themselves until they go through suffering, until they go through pain, until they go through obstacles, because it's making you a greater person. 
It's it's bringing out in you things you didn't know you had. So keep the faith, honey, because this is going to be a wild ride. And at the end of this ride, you'll see what God had um, originally intended for you to see. Even if it's not on this side of heaven, sometimes we won't get answers on, on this side of heaven. Sometimes we will. But you've got to understand that God knows who you are. God knows the path that he wants you to take. And God knows where you are. And he bled his love for you. Uh, out of his out of his belly came rivers of living water for you. Not only out of your belly, out of his belly flows the rivers of living water for you. He loves you so much and he wants you to understand that this too is for a greater purpose. This too is just not for nothing. It is for your greater glory and his greater good. And I know it's hard to celebrate in, in adversity, but he's trying to see if you know who you are and if you know that you've got what it takes to do what he's called you to, to do. And all the hell that you're going through right now is for a greater purpose. His purpose, his will, and his design for your life. And we, we often run from God's design for, your, for our lives, but he knows better. So if he's telling, telling you, no, I believe that there's a greater yes around the corner. If he's telling you that that person, that that man or that woman is not for you, there's a greater man or woman or a woman for you around the corner. You've got to understand that God has a greater plan for you than you could ever have for yourself. I pray that you, God, and I worship you, God, and I thank you for your bleeding love, and I thank you for the cross. Oh God, speak to every heart, speak to every spirit, speak to every mind, speak to every soul. Lord Jesus, come forth in a powerful way in every life, Lord God. Reveal yourself to everyone, Lord God. Under the sound of my voice, heal where there needs to be healing, restore where there needs to be, be restoration, um, deliver where there needs to be deliverance, Lord Jesus. Take over our lives permeate our spirit, go down to the very marrow of our bones and do what only you can do. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I'll see you next week. Take care. Bye. It is well with my soul.
sign off just now, but the Lord um, is having a, a different plan. I'm going to pray for everyone that is um, downtrodden and feeling like they're so overwhelmed. Father, I pray for every broken heart, for every cast down spirit. I pray that you lift every head, restore every soul, God. I pray that you will just be the God of the restoration, be the God of the comeback, oh God. Be the God of every setback, oh God. Speak to your children today. Speak life to your children. Give answers where there needs to be answers. Give help where there needs to be help. God, I praise you. And I declare that you said, like you said in your word today, you said to me, it is well. It is well. And I received that for my life. And Lord God, I pray um, that every circumstance in the life of your people will be fixed, oh God. I, I declare that you will bring clarity to every confused state in every life, oh God. That you will take out the people that needs to be taken out. That you will address situations that need to be addressed in every life today, oh God. I praise you and I lift you up and I declare that it is well. I declare that this day shall be the first day of the rest of your life. This day shall be the first day of the rest of your life. I declare that things are coming together with which were in confusion. I declare that peace is being bestowed on confusion. I declare that brokenness is being fixed right now. I declare that all the pieces that were discombobulated and 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 set apart, oh God. I declare that all those pieces are coming together. I declare that you're giving vision where there was blindness. I declare that you're putting the puzzle together which which were which was scattered in pieces. Lord, I pray that your spirit will abide with your people today. Reach down and touch us in a special way, God. We bless you. We adore you. We magnify your holy name and we bless you. And I declare that it is well. Everything that was broken, it is well. Every dream that has died, it is coming to life. I declare that your spirit will be upon your people in a mighty special way. I declare that solutions are coming to your people in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, break every chain break every balance, Lord God. I pray that every demonic agenda on every life will be scattered, and I declare that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. I declare that right now, in this moment, generational curses of poverty will be broken, oh God. I declare that generational blessings will reign. I declare that the blood of Jesus is covering and restoring all sin. I declare that mothers and sons are getting back together. I declare that fathers and daughters' relationships are being restored. I declare that husbands and wives are coming back together. Restore intimacy in marriage. Not only sexual intimacy, Lord God, but communicational intimacy, Lord God. Cause husbands to open up to wives, wives to open up to husbands, oh God, oh God, and I declare that your peace will reign in every marriage, oh God, I pray, Lord God, for every single person that is lonely, every 
single person that is looking for love in, in the bed of a man and woman, oh God, I declare that they will realize who they are and whose they are, God. And I declare that they will um, recognize that your ultimate plan is the best one, oh God. I, I pray, Lord God, that you will comfort them. Do not leave them comfortless, Lord God. Do not leave them friendless, oh God. Send people into their lives, oh God. Send help. Send help, Lord God. Send friends. Send leadership, oh God. Send godly leadership into their lives, oh God. I pray that you will just have your way in every single person's life and, and let them know that they are whole without a partner, that they are who you made them to be without a partner, that a partner is um, supposed to add to them, supposed to be a compliment to them. A, a, a partner is not supposed to complete them. On the level, on the spiritual level, God, you are supposed to complete them. And Lord God, show them what your completion in their life looks like. I pray, Lord God, that you'll take back their hearts, that you'll take back their spirit, and mend and sew it back together. Every broken heart, every broken relationship. Sew it back together, mend their hearts back together. And if that person was meant to leave by your design, oh God, comfort them, restore them, God. I rebuke every spirit of suicide, oh God, right now. You will not die, but you will live, declares the Lord. And your life will be greater when that person leaves than it was before you had that person in it. That person was not your life. Jesus, Jesus is your life. A man or woman cannot be your life. Jesus, the one who created you, is your life. And every one that he sends into your life adds to your life, not detracts from it. And the pain and hurt that you feel, it will pass. Trust me. This is not the end. Your crushing is not the end, like T.D. Jake says, and I agree. Your crushing, what was sent to crush you, is not the end, and it will never be the end. The end of this relationship, this toxic relationship that had you bound, is only the beginning of what God has for you. And when God is ready, he will send the man or woman to accomplish, to, to accomplish your destiny with you and to compliment you and to strengthen you. But while he's doing that, beloved, he's going to work on you until he gets you to the place where he feels that you're ready. So, what, like I said a few weeks ago, go through it. Don't run from it. Go through your pain. Go through it. Don't escape from it. Don't try, don't try to get into another person's bed. Don't try and look at porn. Don't try and gossip about that person. Don't try and drink that person away. Don't try and do any of that. Go through the pain, beloved. Feel the pain. It won't kill you. It'll just make you stronger. Feel the pain. Feel it. Feel it. Don't be afraid to feel it. You've run from pain long enough in your life. It's time that you take control of it and feel it and go through it. Feel the hurt, curse, swear, do whatever you need to. Go to counseling, 
but you will be okay. It will be okay. This breakup, whatever he or she is, will not kill you. Jesus, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word. We seal it, Lord God, and we declare that they will not die, but they will live. And that person may have le left them, but you said you will not leave us comfortless. And you also said you will not leave us nor forsake us. You said multiple times, behold, I am with you always. And we believe it. We believe that this is not the end. We believe that this is only the beginning. I bless you, God. Seal your word in the hearts of your people today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Okay, guys, I am really going off right now. Um, I'll see you next week, and I declare that it is well. I declare that at the end of this trial, is a greater glory that you have never seen. God bless you. Bye. And